feel the impact. We're joined now by Treasurer Josh Feidenberg. Uh, Josh, thank you for your time this morning. Did you um, ever... Nice to be with you, Carl, but I'd like to be in better circumstances. Yeah, I know. Did you ever think in your life you would see your city like this? It's incredibly sad and tough. This is devastating. Uh, news last night um, that we're heading for these Stage 4 restrictions, that there's curfews imposed, that there's more restrictions on the movement of, of people throughout the community, of course, more school closures. Uh, nobody wanted to, to get to this. We feel we're very much in a warlike situation. Every Victorian is on the front line. Uh, we can't afford any holes in our defence, so everybody needs to follow these rules. There's only one way out, and that's to stem the tide of new cases. It must be very difficult if you're a small business. I mean, what small business will be open in the next six weeks? Um, already we've seen so many of them go to the wall. Uh, there's been so much carnage. A lot won't make it. This is a big kick in the guts to um, thousands of small businesses right across the state. Already, Carl, about 975,000 Victorians are on the JobKeeper program, and we expect that number to, to remain high even beyond uh, the, uh, the September lockdown period. So these are really challenging times. Everyone's got to come together. People need to put aside their disappointment, their anger, their despair, their frustration, and they've got to follow the rules because we very much are all in this together and just a few people can endanger the many. OK. What will um, this six weeks of stage four lockdown do to the economy? I mean, six weeks was 3.3 billion. What's the number, do you think, the cost of the national economy? Well, Treasury are working that through, but obviously that $3.3 billion number was not based on Stage 4 restrictions, nor was it based on restrictions being right across the state, the situation that we now find ourselves in. So I'll make that number available uh, when it comes to me, but clearly this is going to hit the Victorian economy, which makes up around a quarter of the national economy, mm. and this will obviously impact upon consumer and business confidence more broadly. Back in March, the Prime Minister said everyone who has a job in this economy economy is an essential worker. Um, I guess that's no longer the case for Melburnians. Well, we're going to wait and see what the Victorian government announces in terms of the various uh, businesses and industries and, and how they can operate in these, these conditions. But clearly some will not be able to, to operate, some will at a reduced capacity. Uh, it's important that obviously essential services, not just our health services but also our energy supplies and, and some of the other um, manufacturing continues despite um, the, the broader COVID restrictions. So the, so the Victorian Victorian government hasn't told you yet what that looks like? Uh, we've had some discussions with them, but they're still working through those details. Okay. And we understand that there'll be an announcement from them shortly. OK. Um, what about a couple of these things that have been floated today? The idea of this um, pandemic pay, um, also tax breaks for businesses who source local produce and shop locally? Well, the first thing to say about paid pandemic leave is already some big businesses, for example, West Farmers, who've got Bunnings and Office Works, Kmart, Target, um, they've already announced 14 days of paid pandemic leave for their staff, and they have 30,000 staff in Victoria. The Victorian government's also announced a $1,500 payment uh, for those workers who can't access leave uh, but have to isolate because they've got the coronavirus or they've come into contact with someone who has. Uh, the Attorney General will work with stakeholders on this issue of paid pandemic leave, but clearly there there's business uh, that is making some moves and state governments as well. OK, Josh, um, just finally, do you think it's time, job keeper, job seeker, is it time that you gave some assurances out there? It's probably good timing when people... It's so bleak out there, it's so dark. Is it time for you to give them some assurances that none of them are going to fall through the cracks? Well, let's make a very clear point here, Carl. That is... Um, that the JobKeeper payment at that $1,500 payment supporting 975,000 Victorian workers will continue at that rate till the end of September. You've also got JobSeeker, which doesn't have any mandatory mutual obligation requirements on those uh, people in Victoria. Now, uh, 
we have announced that we'll be extending JobKeeper for another six months. We're looking at the eligibility issues in light of the situation in Victoria, but the Morrison government is already uh, contributing around $14 billion into the Victorian economy through the JobKeeper payment, through the cash flow boost, and with JobKeeper going for those uh, months ahead, that's an extra $3 billion a month going into the Victorian economy Might need to JobKeeper go longer. alone. Well, another six months is an extended period. It takes us to the end of March, and we're very hopeful that we'll make real inroads into the coronavirus by then. Okay, Josh, thanks for your time. Lot on. Appreciate it. Ali. Let's bring in the Lord.